G'day mates, snakes you gotta know, crikey. It's absolutely fantastic to be chatting with you today about some truly fascinating critters of the reptile world. We're diving headfirst into the world of snakes, specifically two that can sometimes get folks a bit muddled, the coral snake and the king snake. One of these beauties is packing some serious venom while the other is a harmless and actually quite helpful little legend. So stick with me, and we'll get you clued up on these amazing serpents. It's gonna be a wild ride. Understanding the differences between these snakes is more than just knowing your wildlife. It's about respect and safety. By the time we're done, you'll be able to spot the difference like a true wildlife warrior. And remember the best way to interact with any wild snake is to admire it from a respectful distance. Right, let's get into it. Woohoo! The coral snake, a colorful warning. All right, let's talk about the coral snake first. These guys are absolutely stunning, real head turners with their bright, vibrant colors. You'll see bands of red, yellow, or sometimes white, and black. Now the order of these colors is super, super important. Their bodies are generally quite slender, not big and bulky like some other snakes you might see. They're built for slinking through leaf litter and burrowing. Real masters of disguise when they want to be, despite those flashy colors. Their scales are smooth, giving them a sleek, almost polished look. The head of a coral snake is another clue. It's usually pretty small and not very distinct from its neck. Their eyes are typically small and round pupiled, which is interesting because many venomous snakes have elliptical, cat-like pupils. These snakes are part of the Elapidae family, which means they're related to cobras, mambas, and sea snakes. There are many different species of coral snakes, mostly found in the Americas. They're not usually very big snakes, often averaging around two feet in length. So, when you see a snake with red, yellow, and black bands, your alarm bells should start ringing just a little bit. Coral snake's secret weapon, venom power. Now, let's get down to the business end of the coral snake. It's venom. Crikey, this is serious stuff. Coral snakes possess a potent neurotoxic venom. What does that mean? Well, neurotoxic means it primarily attacks the nervous system. It can interfere with the communication between nerves and muscles, leading to muscle paralysis. And when that paralysis affects the muscles you need for breathing, like the diaphragm, well, that's when things get really, really dangerous. Unlike vipers that have those long hinged fangs at the front of their mouth that fold back, coral snakes have relatively small fixed fangs. Because their fangs are smaller, they typically need to bite and hold on for a moment, sometimes even chew a little, to inject a significant amount of venom. The effects of a coral snake bite might not be immediate. Sometimes there can be a delay of several hours before serious symptoms start to show. Symptoms can start with localized pain, numbness, or tingling at the bite site, but then progress to slurred speech, blurred vision, drowsiness, difficulty swallowing, and eventually, respiratory distress or failure. That's why any suspected coral snake bite needs immediate medical attention. Anti-venom is available and can be life-saving, but it needs to be administered by medical professionals. Coral snakes are generally not aggressive. They are quite shy and secretive creatures. So the best way to avoid that venom is to leave them be, admire their beauty from a safe distance, and let them go about their snaky business. Meet the King Snake Nature's Impersonator. Right then, let's switch gears and talk about the King Snake. What an absolute legend this snake is. King snakes are famous for a couple of things. Their incredible color patterns, which can sometimes look a lot like a coral snakes, and the fact that they actually eat other snakes, including venomous ones. Physically, king snakes can vary a lot in appearance depending on the species and where they live. Many king snakes, particularly species like the scarlet king snake and some milk snakes, also have red, black, and yellow or whitish bands. This is where the confusion with coral snakes comes in, and it's a classic example of Batesian mimicry. However, their bodies are generally a bit more robust and muscular than a coral snake's. The head of a king snake is typically a little more distinct from its neck compared to a coral snake. Their scales are also smooth and glossy, giving them a similar sleek appearance to coral snakes. King snakes are generally non-venomous. Instead, they rely on their powerful constricting abilities to subdue their prey. They are fascinating, beautiful, and incredibly beneficial snakes to have around helping to control populations of rodents and even those venomous snakes we talked about. Section 5. King Snakes, the good guys of the serpent world. Let's really celebrate the king snake now because these guys are true champions in the reptile kingdom. As I mentioned, they are non-venomous. 
If a king snake bites, which they might do if they feel threatened and can't escape, it's more of a defensive nip. Their primary weapon, and it's an impressive one, is constriction. When a king snake catches its prey, be it a rodent, a lizard, a bird, or even another snake, it strikes with incredible speed, grabbing on with its rows of small, sharp teeth, then like lightning it throws its powerful, muscular coils around the animal. One of the most amazing things about king snakes is their opiophagy, that's a big word for snake eating, and they're not just eating any snakes, they are known to prey on venomous snakes like rattlesnakes, copperheads, and even coral snakes. Because they are harmless to humans and so beneficial to the ecosystem, king snakes are critters you definitely want to have around. They are truly one of nature's good guys. Section 6. Home Sweet Home. Where These Snakes Slither. Now where do these colorful characters actually live? Let's talk about their habitats. Coral snakes are predominantly found in the Americas, from the southern United States down through Central and South America. They're quite adaptable but generally prefer wooded, sandy, or marshy areas. You'll often find them in regions with plenty of ground cover, like leaf litter, under logs, or in burrows. In the United States, for example, the eastern coral snake is common in the southeastern states, from North Carolina down to Florida and west to Texas. King snakes, on the other hand, have an even wider distribution and are found across North America from southern Canada throughout the United States and down into Central and South America. They are incredibly versatile and can thrive in a huge range of habitats. You can find king snakes in forests, grasslands, deserts, swamps, riverbanks, and even suburban areas. Comparing the two, you might find both coral snakes and king snakes in similar regions, sometimes even in the same general habitat, which is another reason why correct identification is so important. Understanding their preferred hangouts helps you know where you might encounter them. What's on their snaky menu? All right, let's talk Tucker. What do these snakes like to munch on? The diet of a coral snake is quite specialized. These guys are primarily ophiophagous, meaning they eat other snakes. Isn't that wild? They'll go after smaller snakes, including other coral snakes, blind snakes, and garter snakes. They're also known to eat lizards, frogs, birds, and rodents, but other snakes often make up the bulk of their diet. King snakes, true to their name, also have a royal appetite and are famous for their varied diet, which definitely includes other snakes. As we mentioned, they are ophiophagous and will readily consume garter snakes, rat snakes, and even venomous species like rattlesnakes, copperheads, and yes, coral snakes. But they don't stop there. King snakes are opportunistic feeders and will also happily devour rodents like mice and rats, lizards, bird eggs, turtle eggs, and frogs. The difference in their primary food sources is quite interesting. Their dietary habits really reflect their roles in the ecosystem. Section 8. Snaky Moods. Spotting their behavior. Now let's get into snake psychology a bit. Their behavior. Coral snakes are generally quite shy, secretive, and reclusive creatures. They are not aggressive by nature. They spend a lot of their time hidden underground in burrows or under logs and leaf litter. When they are confronted or feel threatened, their first instinct is to try and escape. If a coral snake feels cornered and can't escape, it might display some interesting defensive behaviors. It may hide its head under its coils and thrash its tail around, sometimes even everting its cloaca. Biting is an absolute last resort for a coral snake. King snakes, on the other hand, can sometimes appear a bit more bold, though they too would rather avoid a fight. When first encountered, a king snake will also usually try to flee. However, if they feel threatened and cornered, they can put on quite a defensive display. So, while coral snakes are more about hiding and subtle warnings, king snakes can be a bit more dramatic in their defensive tactics if pushed. Section 9. Spot the difference, stay safe, legends. Alright legends, we've covered a lot of ground, so, let's bring it all together and make sure you're crystal clear on telling these amazing snakes apart. The most famous trick is the rhyme, and there are a few versions, but a common one for North American snakes is Red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, venom lack, or friend of jack. This refers to the order of the colored bands. On most North American coral snakes, the red bands touch the yellow bands. On many harmless mimics like scarlet king snakes or milk snakes, the red bands touch the black bands. This is a great starting point. However, crikey, you've got to be careful. This rhyme isn't foolproof everywhere. For example, some coral snakes outside of North America, or even some variations within, might not follow this pattern perfectly. And some king snakes might have aberrant patterns. 
always consider other factors like body shape, slender coral versus more robust king, head shape, small indistinct coral head versus slightly more defined king head, and behavior. Ultimately, the best advice I can give you mates is to admire all snakes from a respectful distance. Stay safe out there and keep exploring and learning about our amazing wildlife. Woohoo!